TV. Hello everyone, I'm Michael. Welcome to Reading at Home. Have you ever pretended to be a builder? Maybe sawing some timber or painting a house? Hmm, that gives me an idea. Why don't we hear a story all about building today? Reading at Home! This story is called Young Engineers and it's written by Andrew King and illustrated by Benjamin Johnston. Now before we start, make sure you've settled in and you're comfortable for our story. Here we go. The world is a playground for young engineers and young engineers have all sorts of ideas. They dream and they draw, they design and create. They always have things to improve or to make. Young engineers, siblings Gordon and Grace, had galactic ideas and were heading for space. Their rocket was huge, it had seating for three, and with hyperdrive thrust, shh, they'd be back before tea. Young engineers, sisters Kylie and Kitty, had planning ideas and were building a city. With park and ride stations, there weren't many streets. Instead, they built walkways with gardens and seats. Young engineers, brothers Hank and Hugh Bart, had racing ideas and fine-tuned their go-kart. They'd made it with care. It was long, sleek and low. From the hilltop, they wondered how fast it would go. Young engineers, cousins Mel and Marco, had farming ideas and a new crop to sow. Their tractor was strong. Their plough had new tines. They planted their seeds in the straightest of lines. Young engineers, neighbours Wendy and Wade, had refreshing ideas and sold iced lemonade. Mm. Their business was booming, their customers keen, so they drew up a plan for a bigger machine. Young engineers, schoolmates Pat, Pam and Pip had sailing ideas and were launching their ship. It would carry supplies from the wharf in their bay to people in places a long way away. Young engineers, triplets Sam, Sean and Sid had progressive ideas and were going off grid. With batteries charged by the wind and sunlight, their torches and lanterns worked all through the night. Young engineers, good friends Kathy and Cam, had muddy ideas and were forming a dam. The rain kept on falling, the water rose fast, their dam wall was strong, but how long would it last? Young engineers, besties Tilly and Tash, had reuse ideas and made toys out of trash. From bottles and boxes, scrap paper and string, with glue, wire and tape, they could make anything. Young engineers, buddies Nate and Nicole, had mining ideas and were digging a hole! With heavy equipment, they tried to dig deep, but they had to rethink as the sides became steep. Young engineers, close chums Alfie and Adair, had healing ideas and were mending a bear. It had fallen quite badly and come to some harm, but it soon would be fixed with a robotic arm. Young engineers, play pals Brenton and Bryce, had secret ideas and a coding device. They could transfer a message and decode it too. They had their own language that no one else knew. The world is a playground for young engineers, and young engineers have all sorts of ideas. You dream and you draw, you design and create, and you always have things to improve or to make. And that's the end of our story, young engineers. I wonder if Amy can think of anything to talk about from our story. Hi, I'm Amy. Do you like to dream, draw, design and create, just like the young engineers in today's story? 
They had a lot of fun working together to solve problems and invent new things. Can you remember some of the ideas that they had? Let's go back and have a look, shall we? Do you remember Alf and Adair? They had a bear who had lost his arm. And so they had healing and mending ideas and they gave him a new robotic arm. Hmm. I wonder if you know what the words healing and mending mean? Well, I can see here on the page that they have helped Bear by making him a robotic arm. I think healing and mending means that it helps someone to feel better. I'm sure Bear feels better now. And what about Gordon and Grace? They were young engineers, they had galactic ideas and were headed for space. I can see some words here. It said, with hyperdrive thrust, they'd be back before tea. Hmm. The words hyperdrive thrust are new to me. I wonder if I can look at the pictures and the words around it to help me think about what it means. Hmm. And with hyperdrive thrust, they'd be back before tea. So those words mean that they got all the way to space and then back again before tea. I think that the words hyperdrive thrust must mean really fast, like a rocket. You know, sometimes you'll come across words in a book that you may not be sure what they mean, but you can read around the words and look at the pictures to help you work out the meaning. These young engineers had lots of great ideas inventing and making new things. I wonder who could help you to draw, dream and design your young engineering ideas. Thanks, Amy. I know when I'm faced with a problem like, how can I make a building of my very own? I like to work with my friend, Brianna. I can show you how in the art room. Perfect. That's up next. See you soon. Welcome back to Reading at Home. Would you like to build something like the kids did in The Young Engineers? Well, Brianna's going to show us how to make a building of our very own in the art room. Art at home. Thanks, Michael. Hi, I'm Brianna and I'm listening to the busy city noises. Can you hear them? Today in the art room, we're going to make our own building to go into our little city. First, we'll need a grown-up around to supervise. Then we'll need some paint, cardboard boxes, paper rectangles, glue, chenille sticks, pom-poms, and a pen to draw with. Now, our first step is to paint our cardboard boxes. I've already painted mine earlier so they're nice and dry, and I've chosen the colour blue, but you can choose whatever colour you like. Next, we're going to get building. This is the fun part. We're going to put our biggest box down the bottom, then we're going to stick a smaller box on top. And then I've even painted a cup that I'm going to stick on the very top. Now I'll turn this building around and you can see the next step is to add the little windows, just like so. I've got them side by side and from top all the way to bottom. Now, these are the windows that people will look out and view the world from. And as you can see, I've already started drawing some little people. So why don't we draw another one? I'm gonna draw someone smiling in here. So I'll do a circle for the head, a line for the body and an arm that's waving. Maybe another little hand there. And then I'm going to add a sticker to be the face. But if you don't have a sticker, you can just draw a smiley face. Look, we've got some neighbors at the top there. But now we need the spire of our building to make it nice and tall. So let's get a grown up to help us make a hole at the top. Then we're going to stick our chenille stick through, like so. And then add on a pom-pom with a bit of tack. And just like that, we have a building that's ready to open. You might want to keep growing your city by building more and more buildings, just like the young engineers in our books did. It's been great fun thinking all about engineering, but I think it's time we heard another story. Don't you agree, Bill? <laughs> Up next, we have a great story all about an interesting Australian bird. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to Reading at Home. Have you ever listened to an animal and tried to mimic the sound it makes? 
Well, up next, we have a story about an Australian bird who's very good at mimicking other animals. Reading at home. Hi, I'm Amy. And today, I'm going to read a story to you called Leonard the Liar Bird. This story was written by Jodie McLeod and illustrated by Eloise Short. Remember when we get ready to read, we like to make sure we're nice and comfortable so that we can listen carefully to the story. Are you ready? Let's get started. Leonard the Liarbird. In the Blue Mountains in Australia, where gum trees breathe a blue tinged mist of eucalyptus, there lived a liarbird named Leonard. Leonard was born to perform. He loved to act and dance. He loved to play and prance. But most of all, Leonard loved to sing. He could sing all the sounds of all the animals in the bush, from koalas and cockatoos to possums and king parrots. Since he could talk to everyone, Leonard had plenty of friends. He'd gossip with the galahs and jabber with the joeys. He'd banter with the bowerbirds and make a ruckus with the rosellas. But the one friend Leonard didn't have, the one he wanted most of all, was another lyrebird. One day, while Leonard was rehearsing his Karawong call, he heard a little voice. The simpler the tune, the sweeter the song. It was another lyrebird. I'm Lila, she said with a kind smile, and you must be Leonard. Leonard the lyrebird, he who can sing every song of every animal in the bush, Leonard said proudly. And then his voice became sad. But also he who can't find a dear friend. I'll tell you what, began Lila, if you sing a song of every animal for me, I will happily be your friend. Without another word, Leonard fanned out his tail feathers and burst into a serenade of sounds. Cuckoo cucka, cuckoo cucka, cuckoo cucka too. Whistle wobble, whip crack, twitter tweet, too woo. Cheep chirp, clickety clack, cackle cork hoo. Squawk squeak, squeal screech, woof woof, a woo. Lila was quiet. That last sound was a dingo. Leonard explained. Dingoes howl and bark, you know. Very clever, said Lila. But you forgot the most impressive song of all. What song is that? Asked Leonard. When you find it, Lila said with a twinkle in her eye. Do come and sing it for me. And with that, she skip hopped away. Hmm. Leonard was confused. What song was Lila talking about? For the next few days, he tried to think of a song no animal had sung before. While Leonard was out wandering, he passed by a deep, dark cave. Some believe a bunyip lived in that cave. The bunyip had never been seen or heard, but everyone agreed it must be the most frightening beast in the bush with the most fearsome cry of all. That's it, thought Leonard. She wants to hear the sound of a bunyip. All afternoon, Leonard practiced his bunyip call. By the time it was dark, he was ready to show Lila. Just as he approached, Leonard felt his feathers freeze. A hungry fox was prowling towards Lila. Leonard's heart raced. He knew what he had to do. Under the glow of the blue moonlight, he fanned out his tail feathers, stretching out the biggest quills as wide as they would go. Just as the fox pounced, he erupted with the sound of a bunyip. It was a roar, a cackle, a snort and a growl, a bellow, a grunt, a screech and a howl, a mechanical shriek, a jackhammering shout. All at once, the sounds came out. 
the noise ricocheted off the three sisters and whooshed through Wentworth Falls. It echoed around Mount Solitary and bounced off narrow neck walls. It swirled around the Jamison Valley and leapt into the gross. It made every animal in the Blue Mountains tremble. So you can imagine how it sounded up close. Oh! screamed the fox, bounding away into the bush. But Lila didn't move. She was hurt. Leonard ran to her and began to sing softly. Not the sound of a kookaburra or a koala, nor the sound of a possum or a king parrot, just his own gentle tune. A quiet lullaby of twitters and whistles. Slowly, Lila began to blink. That's the song, she whispered. It's your song in your own true voice. But it's so simple, said Leonard. Simple and sweet, said Lila. And so Leonard and Lila were friends. Leonard still performed for the other animals. He even did a bunyip impression for them every now and then. But for Lila, he saved the most simple, sweetest song of all. And that's the end of today's story. I wonder what lesson we might be able to learn from reading Leonard the Lyrebird. Thinking at home. I'm so glad that Leonard and Lila became friends in the story. They had a lot in common, didn't they? Did you notice that both Leonard and Lila were lyrebirds? And also, Leonard and Lila both begin with the Ooh. Do you know which letter represents L? You do? That's right, it's the letter L. Here is the letter L, this is a lowercase L, and this is an uppercase L. We can trace the letter L with our finger in the air. Would you like to have a go? Get your pointer finger ready, here's mine, and when we trace a lowercase L, we start at the top and we draw straight down to the bottom. Would you like to do one together? Top to bottom, that's a lowercase l. You'll see the lowercase l sometimes at the beginning of a word, sometimes in the middle of a word, and sometimes at the end of a word. Now how about the uppercase l? We can have a go at tracing that one together too. Would you like to have a go? You ready? Pointer finger. Now watch carefully as I do it first. This one's a bit different. Uppercase case L starts at the top. We trace down to the bottom and across. Your turn to do it with me now. Top to bottom and across. That's the uppercase L. Did you notice that Lila and L Leonard had the uppercase L at the start of their names? Does your name start with an L? You'll find L in lots of words in the stories you read. Make sure you look out for it and don't forget to practice tracing lowercase and uppercase L. Thanks, Amy. What a lovely way to learn about the letter L. Up next, we're going to head outside for an adventure with Nicola to find out how to move like animals. See you soon. Welcome back to Reading at Home. I think it's time we took a trip outside to visit Nicola and find out how to spread our wings like Leonard the Lyrebird. Moving at home. Hi everyone, my name's Nicola. I loved reading about Leonard the Lyrebird. Wasn't he so clever? Today we're going to move like a bird. Before we start, can you check that you have enough space around you to be safe? Have you ever heard of an eagle? They're very big birds and they love to fly very high in the sky and then dive down to the earth to catch their prey, their food. 
When you're ready, stand very tall, take a big breath in and sweep your arms up to make an eagle's beak above your head, dive down to the floor, pick up your food and then come all the way back up to the sky, eagle's beak, breathe out to come down to the floor. Last one, breathe in and come up to your eagle's beak. This time, make a rainbow in your body over to one side and then over to the other side. Come back to the middle, one last dive down to catch a fish. Well done everyone, come to stand up straight. Another bird I really love is a flamingo. They balance on one leg. When you're ready, shift all of your weight to one leg, pick up the other foot and place it on the shin. Bring your wings out behind you and then bend your body forward like a flamingo. Let's try the other leg. Balance on one foot, place the other foot on the shin, wings out behind you, bend your body forward. It's okay if you wobble. Nice work. Did you know that most birds live in trees? Let's try and balance like a tree. Stand on one foot. This time bring the other foot to the outside. Grow your branches tall and then swoosh in the wind, just like bamboo, side to side. Come back to the middle and stand tall and strong, just like an oak tree. Well done, everyone. See you next time. Thanks, Nicola. Wasn't that great fun moving like birds? It was, and we hope you've enjoyed all the activities and stories we've shared together today. To continue reading more stories before we see you next time, join the Premier's Reading Challenge. Simply visit the website on screen. See you soon. Bye. Authorised by the Queensland Government, Brisbane.